Good morning, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God, the ground and pillar of the truth. Hi. Well, brethren, the um, past couple of days have been quite extraordinary around here. The weather has been absolutely phenomenal, um, very warm, sunny. Today is a gloomy day. <laughs> But um, then, of course, on days such as that, uh, we are out. And um, it's just, uh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for everything that he has been um, guiding us on to of late. Praise the Lord. And also, too, um, thank you. Thank you to every single one of you who have prayed for us. And keep us in your prayers. And that um, have great mercy upon us. Mercy. Mercy, huh? This video is a collaborated effort. And um, we're going to be looking a bit into mercy. Now, we have to remember... That this video that we are going to be engaging in together is for our instruction in righteousness. Okay? Instruction in righteousness. Which you and I, the Church of the Living God, the ground and pillar of the truth, really need right now, a days, today. Okay? We really need that. We are going to be looking... In Matthew chapter 18 okay now I've already done a video on Matthew chapter 18 in respects about uh, you know someone saying you like uh, you're supposed to come to me privately well yeah if you're a brother actually of the church of the living God saved born again converted okay if you're not then that doesn't never mind okay no 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 but we are going to be looking at an aspect of mercy here, okay? And keep this in mind. This is for our instruction in righteousness, which we need, okay? I'm using two sets of scriptures, two Cambridge sets of scriptures. <laughs> Turn in your authorized version of the script. Follow me along, Okay? Matthew chapter 18, we will be reading verses 21 on to verse 35, making some stops along the way, okay? Let us begin. Matthew chapter 18, beginning at verse 21. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother, brother, of the church of the living God, saved, born again, converted. But does that mean that people who are not of the church of the living God, we should hold a grudge and not forgive them or have mercy? Let's continue. How oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times? Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Someone who is of the church of the living God and has done a miss or done something wrong to his brother or sister. See, we have the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, dwelling within us who are saved. Okay? And the Spirit of truth who will guide you into all truth, and the Lord is that Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, will convict you of these things. Unless you decide to harden your heart. And choose to ignore the Lord Jesus Christ. Hence, that's a bad spot for you to be in. A very bad spot. But let's continue. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. Kingdom of heaven. Remember, the kingdom of heaven is always a reference unto the 
physical, literal kingdom that is in Jerusalem where our Lord Jesus Christ is going to be ruling and reigning for a thousand years. Okay? This is for our instruction in righteousness, though. Let's continue. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him, which owed him ten thousand talents. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife, and children, and all that he had in payment to be made. You have a debt that you owe unto the Lord, lost man. You owe the Lord. You have sinned against the Lord. And guess what? You cannot pay that debt. You cannot pay that debt. Only the Lord himself, our God, our Father, Jesus Christ, can repay the debt that you owe him. How so? By coming to him broken and contrite. Trusting on him for what he has done to you because what you did to him. You trust on him. And in that brokenness and contrition, you will call upon him. And may the Lord save you whence you call upon him from a broken heart, from a broken and contrite spirit. See. But see, you owe him a debt, which you can't pay. Verse 26. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. Turn to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. The Sermon on the Mount. Now, I've said this to you many, many times before, but it has to be said again. The Sermon on the Mount, doctrinally, does not apply for us today. This, the Sermon on the Mount, is how it's going to be in the Kingdom of Heaven. Okay? Because when you read the Sermon on the Mount, it is all works. Faith is only mentioned one time in the Sermon on the Mount. And it is mentioned in the form of a rebuke. Okay? The kingdom of heaven is works. Okay? We have to remember that. That's why the Catholics like the Sermon on the Mount. Because it's all works. See? That's why they like it. Okay? You have to keep that in mind. Before instruction and in righteousness? Oh yeah. Oh yeah for our instruction and in righteousness for us today, but doctrinally, doctrinally, does not apply for us today. Because this is before the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. This is before, not after. Hence, before the crucifixion, still under the law. Okay? You have to keep that in mind, especially about the Sermon on the Mount, okay, because a lot of people like to go to the Sermon on the Mount and claim this as doctrine for today. No, 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 okay, to instruct us in righteousness, yes, okay, now, let us read, let us read. From verses 1 on to verse 16. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, 
for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Let's continue. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you, Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have, lo have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth, thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A candle that is set on an hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Now, now, okay, when you look at this, number one, this is pertaining unto the kingdom of heaven. Doctrinally, not for us today. Okay? But for our instruction in righteousness. Verses 3 on to verse 11, you know, blessed are the poor in spirit, starts out with the poor in spirit. Okay? And it ends, blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Okay? We can learn a lot on how to live today. By looking at verses 3 on to verse 11, especially. Look at verse 7. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And when you look back at um, Matthew chapter 18, verses 26 on to verse 27. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion. Is not compassion an aspect of mercy? And loosed him and forgave him that debt. Verse 7 in Matthew chapter 5. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And then when you look here at verses 13 on to verse 16, okay? You've come to the Lord broken, right? You've called upon him out of a broken and contrite heart, right? A broken heart and a contrite spirit. Broken of your self-righteousness, contrite, godly sorrow, okay? Once you're broken and you, godly sorrow has flooded your heart because of fear. Fear that you're going to hell because of what you did to him to put him on that cross. You will call out. The servant, verse 26, in Matthew chapter 18. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. You'll call upon the name of the Lord. It, it just kind of happens that way. Okay? It just happens. Remember, he delighteth in mercy. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, would much more rather be merciful. Verse 27. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the, the debt. And then when you look over here, okay? Verses 3 on to verse 11 in Matthew chapter 5. Now verses 13 on to verse 16 shows us what? We are to work out what the Lord has put in us. 
We're not supposed to sit there idle and cover it. But it's to be shared. We are to work out our salvation. Not earn it, you twits. And I'm not talking to you, my brethren and sisters, when I say twits. I'm not saying that of you, my brethren. Of course not. But no, we are to work out what the Lord has put in. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is then forth good for nothing, but to be cast out and be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. In him was light. He was the light of men. Oh boy. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Glorify your Father which is in heaven, our Lord Jesus Christ, by beholding how you behave. Are you not merciful? Are you not merciful like our Lord Jesus Christ who forgave you? Are you not merciful? Go to Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11. Oh, not Corinthians. Now my hands are going to start sweating. <laughs> Romans chapter 11, verses 30 on to verse 36. For as ye in times past have not believed God, yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief, even so have these also now not believed, that through your mercy they also may obtain mercy. Now hold on. You as the church of the living God, you're out there as the ground and pillar of truth. Okay? You're out there, and people are just railing on you, smacking tracks out of your hands. <laughs> you ever had that one happen to you? Smack the track right out of your hand. I don't want your cuss word. <laughs> How do you react to a situation like that? Hmm? How do you react when you spit on I get even? Huh, I know there are some wonderful European gentlemen out there who, uh, were, who, number one, wouldn't be in such a situation to begin with. But if they were, you know, they'd probably slug the guy. Wouldn't you? Are you not merciful? Hmm? That they may behold, look at what I just did to this guy. I spat on him and knocked his tracks out of his hand. Cussed at him as he walked away. Backed away first and then went a good distance. Then you turn your back. <laughs> that's, a, that's the type of testimony that leaves an impression on people, brethren. You mark my words. You mark my words. That affects someone. Because, see, when they do that, they're expecting you to lash out. Just as would they. We're supposed to be different. Right? For God hath, verse 32, For God hath concluded them all in unbelief, that he might have mercy upon all. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, or who hath been his counselor, or who hath first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again. For of him and through him and to him are all things, to whom be glory forever. Amen. Amen. 
Now, we have to remember, brethren, if you are saved and born again of the church of the living God, the ground and pillar of the truth, you are sealed unto the day of redemption. You cannot become unsealed, okay? This has nothing to do with your salvation, okay? You twits, you devils, this has nothing to do with salvation, okay? Nothing to do with salvation, okay? okay read my lips. Nothing to do with your salvation. But on how you behave out there as representative on, of our Lord Jesus Christ who saved you, you're going to go to heaven. But you know what? Whether or not you are merciful on other people might just have uh, something to do with your judgment at the judgment seat of Christ. Hence your rewards. What a shock, huh? Go to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Okay? Now, you, you cried out unto the Lord, and He forgave you that debt. Okay? He forgave you that debt. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, Romans chapter 12, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. After all he has done for you, the least you can do is live for him, according to the scriptures. Okay? And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Who are you proving that on to yourself? Or ma more rather, on to those whom you are going to be a witness on to? Yeah, don't say, huh? But let's continue. For I say, through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Or ministry, let us wait on our ministering. Or he that teacheth on teaching. Or he that exhorteth on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He that sheweth mercy with cheerfulness. When you are merciful, unto others. Are you cheerful? Or are you begrudging? Ah, I gotta be merciful. Oh, no, no. See, see, you're missing it there, brother, sister. You're missing it. Okay? For God loveth a cheerful giver. As he has given to you, give unto others. As he has shewed mercy unto you, you ought your best to go out of your way to shew mercy. Give you an example. Okay, give you an example. We're going to continue. I have a video in wait that um, would be very damning onto a specific individual, loaded with lots of evidence, even two pictures of this individual. All I gotta do is upload it. And it'd be quite damning. But I'm not gonna do that. Why? Because we're supposed to be different than the lost. We're supposed to be different. We're not to be ignorant 
or foolish in shewing mercy. But we are to be merciful. We are to be different. See, devils and those of the world, brother, sister, they want to pick you. They want to pick at you. They pick at you because they want to elicit from you a response similar unto the response of themselves. Hence, proving to themselves that, ah, yeah, you're not, there's no changed life in you. See, lost people understand that, yeah, there's supposed to be a change. And then when you have these devil twits out there who refute a changed life, <laughs> it makes no sense when you think about it, but then again, that's what people want, right? We're supposed to be different. Showing mercy, not out of, not grudgingly, but cheerfully because of what he has done for us. Well, ought we not supposed to give that unto others as well? And hey, there are those out there who, um, I'm not going to get a help. Not going to get ahead of myself. Let's continue. From verse 9 in Romans chapter 12. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Abhor means extreme hatred. So see, cleave to that which is good. Verse 9 is right there dif uh, disputing, quite categorically, this uh, sappiness of mercy. The Love the sin and hate the sinner. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> Love the sinner and hate the sin. Show that to me, please. We are to be merciful. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. We are to be forgiving. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. But see, it says right here. Abhor that which is evil. Abhor is extreme hatred. We are to hate what is evil, brethren. And we are to cleave to that which is good. There is none good but who? God. Who is God? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And he dwells in you. You know the Holy Ghost? The Lord is that spirit. One God. Spirit, soul, and body. Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love, brotherly love of the church of the living God, in honor preferring one another. Preferring one another, meaning you would rather be around your own kind. Those who are of the church of the living God. Saved, born again, converted. God's a God of distinction? Wow. Yeah. We are, we are in the world, remember. Ooh, we're not of the world. We're not supposed to be of the world. How are you doing at that? Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Whatever it is the capacity is that he has put you in, serve him. Whatever it is, wherever he's put you, serve him. There is no small work when it comes to serving our Lord Jesus Christ. Not for your salvation. You twits. Not you, brothers and sisters. No. For your rewards in the kingdom of heaven. Let's continue. Rejoicing in hope, the blessed hope, the redemption of the purchased possession. Patient in tribulation, this too will pass, maybe, Lord willing. <laughs> Continuing instant in prayer. When you have a need, what do you do? Do you sit there and conspire what you can do, or do you get down on your knees and it's like, Lord, 
You know what I need? I can't. I can't. I just. But, when you have a real need, not a greed, what do you do? Huh? What do you do? Continuing instant in prayer. Distributing to the greed of the saints. <clears throat> Distributing to the necessity of, of saints. Given to hospitality. Look at verse 12 and 13. And, may, and connect the dots, if you will. Okay? Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of saints. Given to hospitality. Do you see how verse 13 and 12 are intertwined? Do you see that? Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. How do you bless those who persecute you? You like, oh, thank you so much for... No, 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 no. The blessing is you telling them the truth from the scripture. By taking this sword of the spirit, <clears throat> cutting them. You bless them by telling them truth through the scripture. Okay? Rejoice with them that do rejoice. And weep with them that weep. How you doing at that? Do you feel joy when a brother or sister, a blessing from our Lord has come upon them? Or are you selfish? Oh, I wish that was happening to me. And what about this one? And weep with them that weep. We learned of something that happened to a beloved sister of ours, and my wife and I literally wept. We wept for the sister. We have wept for several of our brethren. You rejoice with them who do rejoice, and you weep with them who weep. Are you not merciful? Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Oh, yeah. What does that mean to condescend to men of low estates? Go sit with someone who's in a low estate, who needs to be heard, who needs a body present. You know, like in Job, his three friends went to go see him, and they did good. They just sat there and kept their mouths shut for, what, seven days? Because they saw his grief was great. But, of course, if you read the book of Job, you know that they done made it all worse for, the, for Job because they blah, 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 opened up their mouth and started accusing him. Should have kept their mouths shut. Sometimes, brethren, that's all it takes. Are you not merciful? Hmm? Sometimes that's all it takes. You call up a brother and just sit there and listen to him. Like, are you there, Brad? Talk, brother. I'm listening. Be a shoulder. For someone to cry on. If it's in your means, give them for their needs. Whether it's the precious story me, food, pay their bill, buy them shoes. 
Are you not merciful? Recompense, verse 17, recompense with an S, verb. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of men. Like I said, I've made a video that would clearly show every single solitary person, spirit, soul, and body, of what you truly are. And I even got your pretty little picture, too. You know, from that funny testimony thing of yours that he deleted. But see, I'm not going to recompense evil for evil. And neither should you, brethren. Neither should you. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Ha <laughs> ha! Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. Oh, boy! But rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, boy. <laughs> yeah. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Are you not merciful? And is that mercy there, dear brother, sister, in accordance with the scripture or with what you think is merciful? Oh, really, huh? Go to 2 Corinthians now. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses... What verses are we looking at, brethren? Yes. Verses 17 on to verse 21. Now see, looking back at Matthew chapter 18, verses 26 and 27. Okay? The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Did this servant truly have sorrow for what he had done to his Lord? That he owed him? Or was he more concerned about his backside? But it says right there, Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. That ought to have produced what? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17, on to verse 21. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, that's a big if. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Th those of you who refute to change life as if it's a thing that doesn't happen, um... You're liars, you're lost devils. Every single one of you. Every single one of you. Tell them I said so, please. I'm sure they will find out. <laughs> That's one good thing you do. <laughs> um, and all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Remember, we're a, we're a light on a hill. 
Remember? To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we, may, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Are you not merciful? Are you a light on the hill? Are devils out there who go, boom, swear at you, and knock your track out of your hands, spit at you, who want to elicit from you a response of retaliation? Kick, kick your foot off a little bit because the spit will rebuke you. May the Lord have mercy on you. At the great white throne of judgment, may he have mercy on you. Take your steps backwards. Don't turn your back on him. Get away from him at least 12 foot. Because remember, a person can lunge. Okay? Get about 12 foot away. Then turn your back. <laughs> Just a little advice if you ever encounter that. See, that sticks with him, boy. I'm telling you, you ever go through something like that, and instead of like, ah, oh, no, 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 Lord rebuke you, and may the Lord Jesus Christ have mercy on you at the great right throne judgment, buddy. That sticks with people. Far more than what they want to get from you. You spit on me? Boo! Yeah, right. Now, granted, if they're going to attack you physically, defend yourself, of course. Of course. Uh, depraved indifference is not within the scriptures. Okay? You are to defend yourself. What a testimony that will leave. You know why that is? Go to Galatians now, chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. See, the Lord had mercy on you and forgave you. You ought to shew that type of mercy. You ought to. If you don't, it's not dependent on your salvation. You're saved of the church of the living God. You're going to heaven. Okay? You're not being forced. Okay? To shew mercy. But oh boy, it ain't going to go, go good for you at the judgment seat of Christ. Yeah, you'll get in. But don't you... I don't want the Lord to be ashamed of me at all at the judgment seat of Christ. He will be. As he will for you. We ought to lessen the blow. Because again, God forbid, God forbid, you get to the judgment seat of Christ again, and all he is, you. Yeah, yeah, just, I just, I don't want to even look at you. Just get in there. Get. Uh. Again, are you not merciful? Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 on to verse 26. To change life, Okay. The servant in Matthew chapter 18, verses 26 and verse 20 and 27. He was forgiven. That should have produced a changed life in him. For, our, you know, in our, our instruction in righteousness. You come to the Lord having godly sorrow. 
for what you did to him. Okay? Did this guy have godly sorrow for what he did to the Lord? No, he was more concerned about his backside. Okay? Yeah, that comes. Yeah, that's part of it. Absolutely. But see, that produces in someone ought to, who is sincere, whose heart is broken. <laughs> okay? That will produce godly sorrow. I put him up there. It was my fault. Okay? Verse 22 and verse 26 in Galatians chapter 5. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. And of course, of, oh, I got to go there. You know I got to go there. Galatians chapter 2, verses 20 and 21. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. Do not grieve the Holy Ghost that is in you. Whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. You go find that. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness came by the law, flesh by something you do, then Christ is dead in vain. And of course, Galatians 6, verses 14 on to verse 15. But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. But a new creature. See, our walk ought to please the Lord. Does it always? If you're honest with yourself, no. Our, our salvation is, that's what you don't have to worry about. You're saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, the ground and pillar of the truth. You're going to heaven. Okay? My dear, sweet young brother from Norway, you're saved, born again, converted. You're going to heaven. Okay? Chill on that. Okay? There are other things to concern yourself about there, my dear, dear young friend. Okay? You're going to heaven. If you are truly saved, born again, converted. You're sealed. Okay? That you don't have to worry about that part. Okay? There are, there are other things you gotta worry about. But you're going to heaven? Don't worry about that. Okay? There are other things you need to worry about. About pleasing our Lord. Go to Proverbs chapter 21. Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 21. Come on, fingers, work with me. One verse in Proverbs chapter 21. Wanted to get more of the context on this, but uh, just the one verse itself will do. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 21. He that followeth after righteousness and mercy findeth life, righteousness, and honor. 
the honor that cometh from God only. How can ye believe? Those of you who seek honor one from another and don't seek the honor that cometh from God only. Okay, now go to 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Verses 1 on to verse 4. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verses 1 on to verse 4. Our lives ought to please the Lord. Are you abstaining from all appearance of evil? Hmm? Are you not putting wicked things before your eyes? Are you being careful about what you listen to? Second Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Don't look at me, look at the book. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. How's your walk? See, if you live according to the scriptures, that's far more pleasing to our Lord than you coming up with it out of your own head out of thin air and thinking, oh, that's what he's going to like. No, when you have it written down for you to adhere your life according to the scripture, dear brother, sister. Okay? Now, go to Micah. 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 Chapter 6. Micah chapter 6. Micah chapter 6. Sway hands. <laughs> verses 5 and on to verse 8. Micah chapter 6. Verses 5 on to verse 8. O my people, remember now what Balak, king of Moab, consulted, and what Balaam, the son of Beor, answered him from Shittim unto Gilgal, that ye may know the righteousness of the Lord. Balak, king of Moab, called Balaam, curse the Jews, curse them. But of course, Balaam, who was a prophet, who loved the rewards of unrighteousness, who caused the children, the, uh, the women of Moab to, you know, go uh, amongst the uh, Israelites, okay? Using their, their seductiveness and whatnot, okay? But Balaam answered him, it's like, I, I can't. <laughs> I can't curse them because God said they're blessed and I'm not going to do that. Verse 6. Wherefore, wherewith shall I come before the Lord, and how, and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves of a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my, for the, my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? This was, this was a good one, by the way. The Lord hath shewed thee. O man, what is good? And what doth the Lord require of thee? But to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. And let's throw in verse 9. 
The Lord's voice crieth unto the city, and the man of wisdom shall see thy name. Hear ye the rod, and who hath appointed it? To love mercy. Are you not merciful? See, 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 see. Here's the thing. If you're truly saved and born again of the church of the living God, convert it, okay? Realizing that it's your fault that he went to the cross and that he saved you from going to hell and that you deserve to go there and that he had mercy on you by grace through faith, okay? Grace, remember, grace is unmerited favor. The better blessing, the lesser, okay? Unmerited favor, shooed, okay? That's basically what grace is. And when you understand that, at the least, that will shoot forth out of you in mercy, compassion, long-suffering. There's a difference between long-suffering and patience, by the way. And there are those that can fake that. But again, only for a while. And for some, it's due time for them to shoot themselves in the foot. Because they always do. And at the end of the day, it's an issue of the heart. You can say all the right things. You can even pretend to do all the right things. But when that door is closed and it's just you and the Lord, what's going on there? See, it shows sooner or later, dear friend. And the fake cannot keep up their appearance for that long. Only those who are deceived and being deceived or are deceiving and being deceived. That's your lot. But for you, brother and sister, again, are you not merciful? Look at Micah chapter 7. Micah chapter 7, verses 18 on to verse 20. Who is a God like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? He retaineth not his anger forever because he delighteth in mercy. He will turn again. He will have compassion on us. He will subdue our iniquities and thou will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. Thou wilt perform the truth to Jacob and the mercy to Abraham, which thou hast sworn unto our fathers from the days of old. He delighteth in mercy. Okay? He has, he has had mercy on you by grace through faith. Good Lord Jesus Christ, man, woman, are you not merciful? What's wrong with some of you? Go to Psalm 103. This one. This one, brother. <laughs> Psalm 103, verses 1 on to verse 5. Psalm 103, verses 1 on to verse 5. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Number one. Who healeth thy diseases. Uh, what is that in Matt? Uh, hold your place here. Mark chapter 7. Uh, chapter 7. Mark 2, <laughs> verse 17. Mark 2, who healeth all thy diseases. Uh, Mark 2, verse 17. When Jesus heard it, 
He saith unto them, They that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Back to Psalm 103. Verse 4, Who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Let's read verse 6. The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. And he has saved you. He has saved you. Your life ought to be pleasing unto God. Are you not merciful? But now, let's read verses 28 on to verse 30. You thought I forgot, didn't you? And in Matthew chapter 18, verses 28 on to verse 30. Okay? Now with what we just looked through, after this servant was forgiven of a debt he, can, he could not pay, did he have worldly sorrow or godly sorrow? Let's find out. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants which owed him a hundred pence. Far less. Far less. The hundred pence is far less than what the servant himself owed and his Lord forgave him of that. Okay? Keep that in mind. Far less. Okay? Don't, don't forget that. Hinge that. You got a highlighter? Highlight that. If you got a, a pen or something, underline that. If you don't like to underline, which I, I understand some of you are like that, uh, then at least write it on a piece of paper so it's or just read it over and over and over so you won't forget it. Okay? It's less than what the servant owed. And he laid hands on him. And took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. Yeah, uh, yeah, some recompense, right? Yeah. As the Lord had done unto him. Should he have not have been merciful? And look at this. Look at that verse. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Look at verse uh, 27, or verse 26. Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Verse 29. Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. There's something to that. It's mentioned twice in the same parable. The servant inquired of his Lord, and his Lord forgave him. And here's someone who owes him a mere hundred pence in comparison as nothing to what the servant owed his Lord. What does he do? Well, first of all, he grabbed him by the throat. Like, pay me what you owe me. Can you already see the contrast between a worldly and godly sorrow, by the way? Kind of right there, isn't it? Verse 30. And he would not. But went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. And he would not. Now here's the thing. If you are of the church of the living God, You know what I'm talking about. There has been times in your life, as the church of the living God, the ground and pillar of the truth, there has been times in your life when you could have shown that same kind of compassion and mercy 
that kindness, that love, that affection, that long-suffering unto another. And he would not. How are you chastened for that? If you weren't, you need to check yourself, buddy. How are you chastened? Hmm? Did things get turned upside down for you, huh? How does that stomach of yours feel? Hmm? Were you chastened? Hmm? Or were you like Pharaoh, who only went and asked Moses to pray unto the Lord so he could get relief, but his heart was hardened? Okay? Remember about Pharaoh. Remember about Pharaoh. Yes, God hardened his heart. But Pharaoh's heart was first hardened by his own doing. Prove me wrong. I checked the video that I did. Okay, if I can remember, I'll put it in this one, okay? Pharaoh's heart was first hardened of his own core, and the Lord just let him go on in that, okay? And he went, and he's like, okay, I did this. Moses said what he said, plague was ceased. And then he hardened his heart. Hmm? Look at Pharaoh, huh? As long as everything goes good for you, you're going to go to the Lord, right? Let's look about that. Go to, go to Chronicles, Second Chronicles. This one just kind of, he's like, really? Really? We're going to be contrasting someone who is and someone who ain't. Someone who is, who gets that chastisement pricked someone who ain't who sees the Lord Jesus Christ as only their errand boy how dare you second chronicles chapter 32 king hezekiah king hezekiah verses 24 on to verse 26 now very quickly yeah but i believe king hezekiah is in heaven absolutely he done messed up towards the latter end of his life. He cried unto the Lord. He didn't want to go yet. Okay? Didn't want to go yet. So the Lord's like, okay, I'll give you 15 more years. In those 15 more years that the Lord gave unto King Hezekiah, it didn't really live up to the other previous. Also in that time period, when his son, King Manasseh, was born. And many of you ought to know about King Manasseh. One of the worst kings in the history of all Israel. Who himself is in heaven now. I believe. But we'll, we won't get off on that. Second Chronicles chapter 32 verses 24 on to verse 26. Remember how we read in Romans, your reasonable service? Remember that? Okay. Second Chronicles chapter 32 verses 24 on to verse 26. In those days Hezekiah was sick unto death, was sick to death, and prayed unto the Lord, and he spake unto him, and he gave him a sign. Gave him fifteen more years. But Hezekiah rendered not again according to the benefit done unto him. For his heart was lifted up. Therefore, there was wrath upon him and upon Judah and Jerusalem. Here's the contrast, though. Notwithstanding, Hezekiah humbled himself for the pride of his heart. Both he and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the wrath of the Lord came not upon them in the days of Hezekiah, And he said, and uh, uh, elsewhere, he's like, 
good, at least there'll be peace and truth in my days. He humbled himself for his pride. But I believe that there was still a little kink in Hezekiah. Because the 15 years added on to him hardly lived up to the previous. And of course you can see that in the fruit, King Manasseh. But see, Hezekiah repented, humbled himself. This servant here in uh, uh, Matthew chapter 18, what about him? Hmm? What about him? Go to Psalm 37. Psalm 37. Okay? Psalm 37. Verses 9 on to verse 22. Now you're going to see a contrast here. Note it. Okay? Psalm 37 verses 9 on to verse 22. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. There is no peace to the wicked, by the way. You have a fake peace, one contrived of your own mind. You have no peace, you wicked people. The wicked plotteth against the just, don't you? And gnasheth upon him with his teeth. Yeah. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. You know, the Lord's going to laugh at you, you wicked man. But see, you're dead. Your conscience is seared. There's no hope for you. You poor thing. And, and, and I mean that. I sincerely mean that. You poor, poor, wretched thing, you. The wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy and to slay such as be of upright conversation. You shall know them by their fruits. Their sword shall enter into their own heart and their bow shall be broken. A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume into smoke. They shall consume away. The wicked borroweth, and payeth not again, but the righteous sheweth mercy and giveth. Look at verse 21 and, and Matthew chapter 18. Huh? Okay. The servant was what? He was given mercy. He was, his, he was forgiven. Verse 28 on verse 30 in Matthew chapter 18 again. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him an hundred pence, far less than what he himself owed. And then he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. The same thing he said unto his Lord. Verse 30, And he would not. But went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. Verse 21 in Psalm 37. The wicked borroweth and payeth not again, 
but the righteous sheweth mercy and giveth. Are you not merciful? See, you know you've been forgiven, truly forgiven. You're going to be merciful. Unless you're going to harden your heart and just have all your rewards burned up to where at the judgment seat of Christ, our Lord is going to be nothing but ashamed of you. And just like, get in there, I don't even want to look at you. See, someone who is truly saved gets it, gets that. Someone who is fake will never understand because they're still in their sins. They're saved by what they themselves do, their belief, not by grace through faith. It's not the prayer that saves you. You call on the name of the Lord. It just happens. But see, those who love much are forgiven much. And those who love little. When you, when you realize just what it was that our Lord saved you from and just how much you deserve to be in hell for what you did unto him. Uh, that cannot just but help to come out when dealing with others. But those who are fake can put on a good shoe for a while, but sooner or later, like I said, brethren, ice cold as Beelzebub himself. Now, in uh, Psalm 37, let's, talking about seeing the contrast, what we looked at, now let's look at verses 23 on to verse 33 in Psalm 37. Okay? Verses 23 on to verse 33 in Psalm 37. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. How is, look at that verse, verse 23, okay? Yeah, you see that? <laughs> you see that? Yeah. How are your steps ordered, dear friend? Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I have been young, and now I now am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Lord will not forsake you. And if he does, you need to examine yourself. <laughs> <laughs> he is ever merciful and lendeth and his seed is blessed. He is ever merciful and lendeth. Depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints. He'll whip you. He'll chastise you. But see, you need to depart from evil. If you are not walking uprightly, if you are living in sin, the Lord's mercy be upon you if the only merciful thing he can do to you is to kill you so that your spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Do you understand me? Don't give me this stuff that God doesn't care about how you walk. I, look up the definition of this word. Only an idiot would believe something that stupid. 
Only an idiot. Look that up in Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Okay? Only an idiot would believe something that's stupid. Only an idiot. Okay? Verse 27 again. Depart from evil and do good, and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever. But the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. Look at that servant guy here in Matthew chapter 18, huh? Think about him. Think about yourself. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom. The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. And his tongue talketh, talketh of judgment. The law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. The wicked watcheth the righteous and seeketh to slay him. Yeah. Yeah, by checking out what's that thing called my life, apparently. You have some very serious issues. Poor thing, you. Poor thing, you. And verse 33. The Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. Hmm. Go to Psalm 61. Psalm 61. The contrast between those who are truly saved and who are truly lost. A truly saved brother or sister, converted of the church of the living God, the ground and pillar of the truth. Yeah, you can have your heart hardened by your own self. But the Lord is going to make your life a miserable existence. You're going to be a miserable man. You're going to be a miserable woman. Are you not merciful? Psalm 61. It's only eight verses. Hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. And that rock is in capital R. But use your head. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings, Silah. For thou, O God, hast heard my vows. Thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. To fear the Lord, that is the beginning of wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Thou wilt prolong the king's life and his years as, as many generations. He shall abide before God forever and prepare mercy and truth, which shall preserve him. So will I sing praise unto thy name, that I may daily perform my vows. He shall abide before God forever, verse 7. O oh, prepare mercy and truth, which may preserve him. Psalm 109. Psalm 109. Psalm 109. We are going to be reading Psalm 109. Check this out. Hold not thy peace, O God of my praise, for the mouth, for the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful are open against me. They have spoken against me with a lying tongue. <laughs> They compassed me about also with words of hatred and fought against me without a cause. Well, they they come up with their own causes. For my love, they are my adversaries. 
but I give myself unto prayer. And they have rewarded me evil for good and hatred for my love. Now, verses 6 on to verse 20. Now pay attention. Someone who is not saved. See, someone who is saved. Verses 1 on verse 5. Who is being merciful. Who is shewing that compassion that the Lord has showed upon you. And not retaliating when your tracks are smacked out of your hand and you spit on. No. No. But you get placed under wrath. But see these wicked people who continue in that? Set thou a wicked man over him and let Satan stand at his right hand. Oh, like a provincial, a Jesuit provincial. When he shall be judged, let him be condemned and let his prayer become sin. Hmm. Let his days be few and let another take his office. Now this is talking right there, another take his office about Judas who fell by transgression. Okay. But also in contrast to that, one uh, devil goes away, another takes his place, unfortunately. Let his children be fatherless and his wife a widow. Let his children be continually vagabonds and beg. Let them seek their bread also out of their desolate places. Misery and love's company, right? The children of the devil beg. They're vagabonds wandering about. No firm foundation. Let the extortioner catch all that he hath, and let the stranger spoil his labor. Let there be none to extend mercy unto him, neither let there be any to favor his fatherless children. Let his posterity be cut off, and in the generation following let their name be blotted out. Think about this in contrast to this servant who was given mercy. but didn't shew mercy. Why? Maybe because for our instruction in righteousness in this, maybe he wasn't truly really of the church of the living God. Now granted, from in Matthew chapter 18, okay, doctrinally, yes, that's something totally different, but our instruction in righteousness, hello, okay? Verse 14, let the iniquity of his fathers be remembered with the Lord, Jesuit fathers, and let not the sin of his mother be blotted out. <laughs> sin of his mother, mystery Babylon. <laughs> uh, let them be before the Lord continually that he may cut off the memory of them from the earth because that he remembered not to shew mercy but persecuted the poor needy man that he might even slay the broken in heart. As he loved cursing, so let it come unto him. All your anathemas. <laughs> All your anathemas, like in the decrees in, uh, of the Council of Trent, which I, I got that. Oh, boy. You talk about a uh, church that loves cursing. Yeah. As he loved cursing, so let it come unto him. As he delighted not in blessing, so let it be far from him. As he clothed himself with cursing like as with his garment, so let it come into his bowels like water, and like oil into his bones. Let it be unto him as the garment which covereth him, and for a girdle wherewith he is girded continually. Let this be reward of mine adversaries from the Lord, and of them that speak evil against my soul. You devils out there. You got, uh, you got some big things coming your way. But now, okay, we're still in Psalm 103 or 109. Verses 20, uh, 21 on to verse 31, okay? The saved praying about the lost, the devils, 
in verses 1 on to verse 5. His prayer about these devils who are not going to change. Contrast between saved and lost. And now verses 21 on to verse 31. But do thou for me, O God the Lord, for thy name's sake, because thy mercy is good, deliver thou me. For I am poor and needy, and my heart is wounded within me. I am gone like the shadow when it declineth. I am tossed up and down as the locust. My knees are weak through fasting, and my flesh faileth of fatness. I became also a reproach unto them. When they looked upon me, they shake their heads. Help me, O Lord my God, and save me according to thy mercy. Thanks be to God for his unspeakable gift. His salvation is mercy. It's grace. God's grace, by the way, is his mercy. That they may know that this is thy hand, that thou, Lord, hast done it. See, right there again. That thou, Lord, hast done it. What? Saved you. See, the lost know when you, Church of the Living God, are in front of them. Why? Because they are of the world and you are of God. You have the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the Lord is that Spirit dwelling within you. They are of the world. They can't get it because they are not of God. They don't have God living within them. But see, they know when someone who, are, who is truly of the church of the living God is in front of them. That's why they, they get panic-stricken when you just hold out a set of scriptures. It's like, oh, oh. That's why they smack your tracks out of your hand. And there are those of you out there who have heard because I, I, when I, sometimes when I would be out there, um, I have like things. So people I were talking to, I can, can I give you something? Can I give you something? Never. Hey, you know, never like that. No, no, no. The way I, you know, give tracks to people, that kind of stuff. Never a forceful thing. Because people are oh, well, maybe you're being an idiot, a jerk to them. No, 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 no. Can I give you something? <laughs> How many times? What do you want? Uh, I don't want anything except to see you get saved. Verse 28. Remember when it comes to certain people that you know that have made their choice and have gone past that point of no return. Let them curse, but bless thou. When they arise, let them be ashamed, but let thy servant rejoice. Let them alone. Let mine adversaries be clothed with shame, and let them cover themselves with their own confusion as with a mantle. I will greatly praise the Lord with my mouth. Yea, I will praise him among the multitude, for he shall stand at the right hand of the poor to save him from those that condemn his soul. And did not this guy in Matthew chapter 18 send that one guy to prison for owing him in comparison nothing? hundred pence is a lot, yes, but in comparison to what his Lord forgave him of. Go to Hosea chapter 4. Hosea chapter 4. Hosea chapter 4. Verses 1 on to verse 6. Hear ye the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out, and blood toucheth blood. Therefore, 
shall the land mourn, and every one that dwelleth therein shall languish, with the beasts of the field, and with the fowls of heaven, yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. Yet let no man strive nor reprove another, for thy people are as they that strive with the priest. Therefore shalt thou fall in the day, and the prophet also shall fall with thee in the night, and I will destroy thy mother. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because they have rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. It's a very bad place for you to be if you reject what the Lord has done for you, which offers you. And you say you have, and you say that you are of his. But behavior proves otherwise, doesn't it? Now, back to Matthew chapter 18, verses 31 on to verse 33. Matthew chapter 18, verses 31 on to verse 33. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry, and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, and said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt, because thou desiredest me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? Get a load of that there, dear friend. Daniel, chapter 4. Oh, yeah, this, this is good. Daniel, chapter 4. As I said, this was a, a collaborated effort. Daniel chapter 4, verses 19 on to verse 27. Daniel chapter 4, verses 19 on to verse 27. Then Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, was a stone for one hour, and his thoughts troubled him. The king spake and said, Belteshazzar, let not the dream nor the interpretation thereof trouble thee. Belteshazzar, Daniel, answered and said, My lord, the dream be to them that hate thee, and the interpretation thereof to thine enemies. The tree that thou sawest which grew and was strong, whose height reached unto the heaven, and the sight thereof to all the earth, Everyone could behold. Think about this right now as we're reading this, okay? Whose leaves were fair, and the fruit thereof much, and in it was meat for all, under which the beasts of the field dwelt, and upon whose branches the fowls of the heaven had their habitation. It is thou, O king that art grown and become strong. For thy greatness is grown and reaches on, reacheth unto heaven, and thy dominion to the end of the earth. And whereas the king saw a watcher and an holy one coming down from heaven, and saying, Hew the tree down and destroy it, yet leave the stump and the roots thereof in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass, and the tender grass, of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beasts of the field till seven times pass over him. This is the interpretation. O king, and this is the decree of the Most High, which has come upon my Lord the king, that they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven, and seven times shall pass over thee, till thou know 
Till thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. King Nebuchadnezzar was a pretty proud and cocky guy. And whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the tree roots, thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee, after that thou shalt have known that the heavens do rule. Here's a very stern warning that many of you, many of us of the Church of the Living God should take heed to. Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee, and break off thy sins by righteousness, and thine iniquities by shewing mercy to the poor, if it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility. You know, shewing mercy could preserve you here on earth because love covers a multitude of sins not that you're a Catholic priest or anything like that again this is not talking about salvation okay this is talking about at the judgment seat of Christ how ashamed is the Lord going to be of you He's going to have something against us all, every single one. Because there is not a man on earth that doeth good and sinneth not. But if you are of the church of the living God and just living in sin, hardness of heart, and refusing you know, to take correction, even when the Lord is chastening you strong, and you get handed over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. If the Lord has to kill you, stop you, Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 58, which I read this morning. Isaiah chapter 58. Isaiah chapter 58. Um, verse 32 in Matthew chapter 18. The, then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt, because thou desiredest me. Verse 33. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? Isaiah chapter 58. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and shew my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. They say they are, but they aren't. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast ye find pleasure, and exact all your labors. Then will I confess unto them, Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. I never knew you. It's a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father himself. I never knew you. 
Behold, verse 4, ye fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day, to make your voice to be heard on high. Kind of like the uh, publican and the, um, the Pharisee and the tax collector or the publican. I thank God that I am not as other sinners are. Kind of like this publican. I fast two times in the week. I give tithes of all. <coughs> you know, when you think about that parable and you read it, it, it kind of makes you want to gag. I know of people who call themselves Christians who are like that. <clears throat> Verse 5. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? Get the gravity of that. Doing what you think the Lord would do as opposed to doing what he actually wants you to do and can prove him through the scriptures. A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I have chosen? To lose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke? Is that not being merciful? Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house, when thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thy, that thou, thy, eh, that thou thy, that, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. <laughs> Beg your pardon for that. Love your neighbor as yourself. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord will be your re-reward, watching your backside. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. If thou take away the mist, if thou take away from the mist of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger and speaking vanity, and if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity, and thy brightness be as the noonday, and thy darkness, excuse me, as the noonday. And the Lord shall guide thee continually, and satisfy thy soul in drought, and make fat thy bones, and thou shalt be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water, whose waters fail not. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations. And thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shalt honor, honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. Then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. He delighteth in mercy. Treat others how you would want to be treated. What's perverse is there are some of you out there who, and I'm not talking to the Church of the Living God, there, there are some of you out there who want to be treated the same way you treat those who are of the Church of the Living God. That you got problems in your head. 
perverse. Zechariah chapter 7. Zechariah chapter 7. Zechariah chapter 7. Come on, fingers, work with me. Just finished the book of Zechariah today. Actually, it's a... Zechariah chapter 7. Beginning at verse 8. And we're going to be reading unto the close of the chapter. And the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Execute true judgment, and shew mercy and compassion, compassions, every man to his brother. And oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, the stranger, nor the poor. And let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart. But they refused to hearken and pulled away the shoulder. Ah, and stop their ears that they should not hear. Get a load of that. <clears throat> Yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone, just like Pharaoh. Again, he hardened his heart himself by his own doing first. Lest they should hear the law, and the words which the Lord of hosts hath sent to in his spirit by the former prophets. Therefore came great wrath from the Lord of hosts. Got to be careful. If you're of the church of the living God and you're hardening your heart, and you lost people, don't want to hear it? Therefore, it has come to pass that as he cried and they would not hear, so they cried and I would not hear, saith the Lord of hosts. But I scattered them with a whirlwind among the nations, whom they knew not. Thus the land was desolate after them, that no man passed through nor returned. For they laid the pleasant land desolate. Verse 13. Therefore it has come to pass that as he cried, and they would not hear, so they cried, and I would not hear, said the Lord of hosts. Let that roll around in your head a little bit, dear friend. Now go to back to Hosea. Hosea, chapter 6. Hosea, chapter 6. Hosea chapter 6, verses 1 on to verse 6. Come, and let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn, and he will heal us. He hath smitten, and he will bind us up. After two days will he revive us, and the third day he will rise us up, and we shall live in his sight. Clear reference unto the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Then shall we know, if we follow on to know the Lord, his going forth is prepared as the morning, and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and former rain unto the earth. Remember, th remember this, this video is for our instruction in righteousness. Latter and former rain, specifically talking about the fulfillment of the Jews. Okay? I've addressed that in another video a while ago, so. Let's continue, okay? O Ephraim, 
Ephraim means fruitful, by the way. Ephraim means fruitful. When you read the book of Hosea and you see the constant reference to uh, Ephraim, remember, it means fruitful. O Ephraim, what shall I do unto thee? O Judah, what shall I do unto thee? For your goodness is as a morning cloud, and as a and as the early dew it goeth away. Your goodness only lasts so long. <laughs> Thinking about all these devils who fake it. Absurd, isn't it? Therefore have I hewed them by the prophets. I have slain them by the words of my mouth. And thy judgments are as the light that goeth forth. For I desired mercy and not sacrifice and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. For I desired mercy. He delighteth in mercy. And as the Lord has been merciful unto you, Church of the Living God, Ought you not to extend that mercy? Or are you hoarding it all for yourself? And using the excuse of how it is today to hoard it all. Okay, I've got to read verse 7. But they like men. <laughs> have transgressed the covenant. Therefore have they dealt treacherously against me. Hosea chapter 10, verses 9 on to verse 15. Hosea chapter 10, verses 9 on to verse 15. O Israel, thou hast sinned from the days of Gebeah. There they stood, the battle in Gabea against the children of iniquity did not overtake them. It is in my desire that I should chastise them. And the people shall be gathered against them when they shall bind themselves to their two furrows, in their two furrows, excuse me. And Ephraim is as an heifer that is taught and loveth to tread out the corn, but I pass over upon her fair neck. I will make Ephraim to ride Judah shall plow, and Jacob shall break his clods. Sow to yourselves in righteousness. <laughs> Reap in mercy. Break up your foul ground. For it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. He hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sins, that we may be, might be made the righteousness of God in him. Ye have plowed wickedness. Ye have reaped iniquity. Ye have eaten the fruit of lies. Just believe. No repentance. It's from belief to unbelief. It's always been faith alone from the... <laughs> because thou didst trust in thy way, in the multitude of thy mighty men, the people who itch your ears, you know, therefore shall atonement arise among the people, among thy people, and thy fortresses shall be spoiled, as Shalman spoiled Betharbel in the day of battle. The mother was dashed in pieces upon her children. So shall Bethel do unto you because of your great wickedness. In the morning shall the king of Israel utterly be cut off. <laughs> How are you behaving? How are you behaving, brother? Are you neglecting to be merciful? Has experience made you so hardened that you're not willing to let down your guard a little bit? And you can, I get it, okay? I get that. I get that. You probably, there are probably those of you out there 
who have put out your hands so many times to only have it be spit on, right? And what happens? What happens? You want to protect yourself, don't you? You want to hide, don't you? You harden yourself. And I understand. But see, something we have to be on guard of is hardening ourselves beyond the point where we no longer shew mercy. And that's a real danger that I think some of you underestimate. I really do. I really do. Because yes, one of my faults is, and I've confessed this many a times, I tend to be <laughs> gullible. And I tend to give people chances when I shouldn't. But there again, I I can't forget that mercy that the Lord showed to me because, see, I realized what I did to him. See, this, this is why you can't get it. Number one, you ain't saved. But this is why you can't get it. I know what the Lord saved me from. I know that I put him on that cross. And I also know that he is the only one who could have done anything about it. And he did. He saved me by grace through faith. And see, I, I remember that. I can't forget that. And that co that's, oh boy, that's cost me. Yes, that has. But what's, what's the opposite? What's the opposite? You know, when someone clearly is shooed to be a, a, a devil himself, then it's like, okay, goodbye, you're out of here. But if your brother trespass against you seven times in a day, I'm sorry, brother. I'm sorry I did that. Forgive me. I repent. I'm sorry. Are you not merciful? Is there a middle ground there somewhere? Maybe. But how many of you are hardened when you ought to be being merciful? Hosea chapter 12, verses 1 on verse 6. We're almost done. Like I said, this was a collaborative effort. This was a good one. <laughs> Hosea chapter 12, verses 1 on verse 6. Ephraim feedeth on wind and followeth after the east wind. He daily increaseth lies and desolation. And they do make a covenant with the Assyrians, and oil is carried into Egypt. The Lord hath also a controversy with Judah, and will punish Jacob according to his ways. According to his doings will he recompense him with an S. Will he recompense him with an S. He took his brother by the heel in the womb, and by his strength he had power with God. Yea, he had power over the angel and prevailed. He wept and made supplication unto him. He found him in Bethel, and there he spake with us. Even the Lord God of hosts, the Lord is his memorial. Therefore turn thou to thy God. Keep mercy and judgment and wait on thy God continually. Keep mercy and judgment. Mercy and judgment. I, I give people rope for them to hang themselves. <laughs> okay. You have to prove to me, I mean, you don't, you know what I'm saying. But in order for me to cut someone off with not even pray for them, there are those of you out there I don't speak to anymore. I love you. 
but I still pray for you every day. You understand? Yes, there are those I don't speak to anymore. But you're still always in our prayers every single day. Someone who just totally back away from, don't pray for them anymore because they've proven that they, they're lost. That's different. Mercy and judgment. See, we are to judge according to the scriptures. And when it is revealed unto me personally that, Brad, this guy is a devil. Stay away from him. Don't waste your time. You got it, Lord. <laughs> a lot of times you gotta take a shoe or hit me over the head. It's like, Brad, you know. That was one of the uh, valuable lessons I learned from a dear Christian gentleman. <laughs> uh, but never forgot that one. But uh, yes, mercy and judgment, they go hand in hand. Now go back to Matthew chapter 18, verses 34 and verse 35. Now here's the dispensational difference. Matthew chapter 18, verses 34 and verse 35. And his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him, the one who didn't shew mercy after the Lord had shewed mercy unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespass. What's the dispensational difference? Today, in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles. Your salvation is not predicated on whether or not you forgive someone. Okay? If you don't forgive someone, if you don't let things go, your life is going to be a mess. You're going to have a hard heart. Okay? You're going to have envy, strife, all the works of the flesh. Okay? You're going to be... Your, your life, man, uh, today in this dispensation, if you don't let go and forgive, your life's going to be a mess. You're going to be knotted up inside. Your, your fruit's going to stink as if it came from betwixt your buttocks. Okay? Your life is going to be pretty bad. But see, that's not going to affect your salvation. It's going to affect your rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. Yes. But it's not going to affect your salvation. This... Verse 35 affects your salvation. Why is that? Oh, because it's works in the kingdom of heaven. That's why. In the kingdom of heaven, if you don't forgive someone, you're not going to be forgiven. Today in this dispensation, you don't forgive someone, you're still forgiven of the church of the living God. Oh, brother, sister. Good luck. Good luck. And on that, go to James chapter 2. You were wondering about that, weren't you? <laughs> James chapter 2. James chapter 2, verses 12 and verse 13. James chapter 2, verses 12 and verse 13. So speak ye, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. For he shall have judgment without mercy, that has shewed no mercy. And mercy rejoiceth against judgment. Verse 35 in Matthew chapter 18. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. 
Now see, James is an epistle for the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Okay? We have to understand that. Okay? As this, in Matthew chapter 18, but our instruction in righteousness is it's, it's very simple. You hold on to that, whatever it is, brother, sister, your walk is going to be something else. It doesn't affect your salvation, but it's going to affect a lot of things. Okay? Go to 1 Peter. Go to 1 Peter. I have kind of addressed uh, this before, but right now we need all the instruction and righteousness we can get. First Peter chapter one, verses 13 on to verse 25. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance, but as he which hath called you is holy, be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And if ye call on the Father who without respect of person, persons judgeth according to every man's work, Pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. Now again, today, that's not going to affect your salvation. But your rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. If you die with a hard heart, holding on, harboring something in your heart against your brother, your sister of the church of the living God, or won't let go what some twit, nitwit devil done, done did to you. Think about it. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition of your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. I covered this actually in the last video I did. Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you who by him do believe in God, that raised him from the dead and gave him glory, that your faith and hope might be in God. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of, in, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and bideth forever. All, for all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. And looking at verse 24, for all flesh is as grass withers away. Man in his best state is altogether vanity. Are you not merciful? Is the time present worth it, you having a hard heart and not being merciful? Think about that. Think about that. Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2. Verses 1 unto verse 11. Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself, for thou that judgest doest the, doest the, the same things. Referring to hypocritical judgment, not judgment in a general sense, because we are to judge according to the scriptures, I'm talking about hypocritical judgment. Let's continue. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, 
and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to belief? <coughs> Excuse me, repentance. You weren't expecting that, were you? Keeping you on your toes. Repentance, not belief. Repentance. But after thy hardness and impentient heart, not willing to bend, kneel, treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God who will render to every man according to his deeds. Wait for it. Wait for it. To them who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality eternal life, but unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. Tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil, of the Jew first, and also of the Gentile. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first, and also to the Gentile. For there is no respect of persons with God today. Okay? Now, where was that? Verse 6, who will render to every man according to his deeds. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, we have to touch on this. We have to touch on this. Because you, 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 you got to know that some twit, say, like, oh, he's talking about your salvation. But... No, I, I, think I, said, I, th I think that was made abundantly clear at the very beginning of the video. Okay, but let's let's touch this again. First Corinthians chapter three, verses twelve on to verse fifteen. Now, if any man build on this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. Gold, silver, and precious stones withstand fire. Uh, uh, wood, hay, stubble gets burned up, referring to our works. Okay. Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he, sh which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved. Yet so as by fire, and that's not talking about purgatory. That means our kingdom of heaven inheritance. Our judgment at the judgment seat of Christ. Well, do, well done, thou good and, or, and faithful servant, or just go. It's talking about our rewards, not our salvation. Here, in uh, 1 Corinthians, okay? And he's going to reward us according to our works, our deeds. Not for our salvation. If you are truly saved, born again, converted of the church and the living God, the ground and pillar of the truth. Okay? What's your judgment going to be like at the judgment seat of Christ? Being merciful and remembering from whence thou art come from might help some of you. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 14. Had, had to. Let a man so account of us. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ, of Christ, and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you, 
or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not my, mine own self. For I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified. But he that judgeth me is the Lord in self-examination of yourself within the scriptures. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who will both who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the heart. And then shall every man have praise of God. And these things, brethren, have I in a figure, I have in a figure, transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that no one of you be puffed up for one against another. For who maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou hadst not received it? Meaning, you made, you earned it yourself. You have the church of the living God. He will provide for all your need, not your greed. And that stuff that you greed for and that you get on your own, what glory is that going to do to the Lord? Huh? Wood, hay, and stubble? Hmm. And you got to love Paul's sarcasm here. Now ye are full. Now ye are rich. Ye have reigned as kings without us. And I would to God ye did reign, that we might, that we also might reign with you. For I think that God has set forth us the apostles last, as it were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle on the world, unto the world, and to angels and to men. You want to look at a good example of what it is to be merciful? Under duress? We are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst, and are naked and are buffeted, and have no certain dwelling place, and labor working with our own hands, being reviled, we bless. Being persecuted, we suffer it. Being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the filth of the world and are the offscoring of all things unto this day. I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. Second Timothy chapter 3. Second Timothy chapter 3. For me to say the same thing to you isn't grievous, but necessary. You can't use what's going on out there about how hard it's getting as an excuse for you to harden your own self. Hi. Ephesians, uh, Ephesians. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 10 on to verse 17. And we will be done. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God 
and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Are you not merciful? And the mercy that you are shewing, is it a fast of your own making? Or is it a fast that the Lord would have, which we already looked at? Is it a mercy of your own mind? Or is it a mercy that the Lord would have you to shew unto others? I got to confess, in um, going over this and, um, you know, putting this together, this, this took a while. Then again, remember, we, we had with favorable weather. This is not the only thing that's required of being in ministry. Okay? This is not it. There are other things. But, um, you know, when looking over this, this, this actually, this was a very convicting thing for myself to look at and to go through. And um, the Lord's just like, go here, go here. See how he said, yeah, add this to it. Like I said, this was a collaborative, collaborated effort. And um, thank the Lord for it. I learned something. And hopefully you do too. Hopefully you do too. Don't forget mercy. And not a schmaltzy, sentimental, fleshly mercy. But a mercy that is in accordance with the scriptures. And remember... Remember these devils want to incite you to react as they would so they would have something on you. Are you not merciful? That's going to be it for this video. Um, got more, more videos, obviously, but are coming. Like I said, um, this one at a time thing is very effective. And I know for certain this is how the Lord would have me to do it this way. So this is the way it's going to be for now. But um, thank you so much for watching if you do. Brethren, pray for one another. Pray for one another. Love one another. Don't forget that. Like I said, there are quite a few of you out there who I no longer talk with. Don't you for one second think that I, that we don't pray for you and remember you in our prayers. God forbid. God forbid that I should cease to pray for anybody, for any of you. Don't forget that. And don't you forget that to pray for others. Pray for us. Please pray for us because um, we got to get out of this place, man. <laughs> we can't be here. Uh, we got to get out of this place. And hopefully the Lord will guide us to someplace cheaper and better for us. As will be done. But anyway, that's going to be it for this video. On behalf of myself and my wife, we love you. Thank you so much for watching if you do. We'll see you in the next video.